It's unbelievable. I'm like, when the, when, when is this thing gonna die? You know, when is it? When is it? It's gonna, it's never gonna die. Remember this goal? Stefan steals and he'll ice it. Oh, at least I thought he was gonna until he blew it. That's unbelievable. Here come the Oilers the other way. Hemsky, he scores. Marty Turco does. Can you believe what we just saw? And he talks about it in this episode of I Was In Net 4. Now, even though that memorable game took place in 2007, to really understand the magnitude of it, you need to go back to 1999. NHL entry draft. Patrick Steffen was taken first overall by the Atlanta Thrashers. But unlike so many number one picks of the past, Steffen didn't live up to the high expectations. And after six years in Atlanta, he was dealt to Dallas. And that was just fine with Marty Turco and the Stars. We knew he was a great guy. And, and so when we got him, we were happy. We were, we were not just had veterans on our team, but we were stacked and we had a, you know, a cup caliber kind of team. So we knew we could have used him from just a personality and a personnel perspective. Um, he could pretty much play anywhere in any position. Now, speaking of Marty Turco, when the Stars were getting set to play the Oilers, because he played the night before, he was getting the night off. Or so we thought. You know, Mike Smith was the other goalie, and he started that game. And, you know, we lost the night before, it was Smitty's turn, so I'm, you know, just relaxed. And, you know, first period was okay, and then the second period, Mark andre Pergeron, um, you know, little guy, he, but he's got a cannon. And he hit Mike through a couple screens, dead center in the forehead. Pergeron fires it! Oh my goodness! That hit Smith up high and hard. And Mike just, you know, starfished it, right? He just both arms in the air, went all the way back. I'm like, I don't know, it hurt the shot or him landing, going backwards. I'm like, was he out? And uh, Mike came to the bench and Smitty's like, I'm like, man, how you feeling? He's like, man, that one hurt. I'm like, well, it looked like it did. And, and I was like, hey, take your helmet off. He's like, why? I'm like, I just want to look at your eyes. And he takes it off. And I'm like, yes, it's just give you, he had like long hair. I'm like, somebody, you know, spray some on your face and shake your hair. And I'm like, I had that feel. He's like, hey, why, why was I doing that? I'm like, I said, I don't know. People are going to know what you look like, man. You're just a young guy in the league. You know, you're showing the Edmonton faithful who you are in, in Canada. And, and he didn't finish the game. <laughs> he would go in the locker room. He's like, man, I got a headache. The trainer's like, oh, you're out of there. When Turco came into the game, the Oilers actually had a 4-2 lead. And one of those Dallas goals came courtesy of one Patrick Steffen. But the Stars charged back with three unanswered goals. And suddenly, they had the lead with under a minute left. The Oilers pulled their goalie for the extra attacker. And that kicked off one of the craziest sequences in hockey history. 20 seconds remaining. Bergeron. Band on it. Stephon steals it. He's got an empty net and a gimme. Oh, I'm like, where are we, where are we going tonight? I think we're spending the night in Edmonton. Uh, what am I going to eat? Am I going to have a drink tonight? I'm feeling good. He had a one hand on a stick. He was guiding it in there. He wasn't shooting it. He wasn't trying to do anything fancy. And just hit something on the ice. I don't know what it was. I really don't think he did anything wrong. I think it's the most incredibly unlucky, unfortunate bounce of all time. And when the puck did take that leap, there was just under 11 seconds remaining. So Turco still wasn't that worried. Yeah, I, mean, I think I was embarrassed. You know, I was like, oh my God, you really like, okay, there's only 10, 11, 12 seconds left tops. Went all the way back to the net, you know, kind of arms on the net, like, you know, puffing up my chest, big win in Edmonton, what's up with fans here, whatever. And, and, and so I, I ended up getting a little flat footed because of that. Oh, he missed the net. He, he fell down. You know, a moment in, in sports that are built for TV, just the face, you're like, oh, God. And so I saw him flying. I'm like, if he gets this fast, and I went up to get out to, you know, to get my speed for breakaway, and I couldn't get out. I couldn't get start fast enough. And so he was flying. He geeked me out. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. My favorite part of the whole story is that, uh, that ha Hammer went to my blocker side, but I actually reached back and just with the paddle of my stick, not flat, like the actual blade part, I got a piece of it. Marty Turco comes ever so close to stopping this with his stick. It was it was one of the loudest I've ever heard of building, and it was probably more in shock that uh, that actually happened. 
Now, if you ask a group of hockey fans if they remember the Patrick Stefan miss, most of them are going to say absolutely. But ask those same fans who actually won this hockey game, and you may get some blank stares, but not from Marty Turco. Uh, I just want to tell people, we win the game, man. We win the game. Who cares what happened? You know, we end up getting two points. When I look at my wins column, which I rarely do, I'm like, there's one in there that stands out as uh, one I wasn't expecting. And just when you thought you knew everything about this story, well, this miss may have changed the course of hockey history. You see, the Oilers ended up finishing tied with Chicago for fifth last in the league, but the Oilers had one more win. So it was Chicago who got into the lottery. It was Chicago who won that lottery and used that number one overall pick to take Patrick Kane. So if Patrick Stefan just scores this goal, the Oilers have one last point and perhaps could have taken the eventual three-time Stanley Cup champion. <laughs> you know what? I didn't know that part. Holy sh**. Wow. I mean, I, okay, again, you know, you'll never know how things pan out after that. You know, that's a big ripple right there. Uh, you know, you look pretty good in the city of champions in Edmonton, but uh, it worked out for the Blackhawks, didn't it? <laughs> now, as for Stefan, the lack of production, coupled with nagging injuries, led him to playing his last game in the NHL just six weeks after this blunder. But like Turco said, it's a sequence that will never die. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh gosh, here we go. And uh, you know, we, we feel for everybody, certainly Patrick. And and to be honest, I, I just, I cringe when I think about it because he, he was such a non-flashy guy. Uh, you know, even when he walked, he was just didn't even have an arm swing like we all normally would. He was just so low key and just such a good dude. Nonetheless, man, you, you see it happen. It's just like your jaw drops and you're like, you can't help but watch. It's like a bad car accident, you know? You're like, maybe he scores this one. No, no, actually he doesn't. Maybe I stop. No, I don't stop it either. And uh, so I see Hanski all the time. He, of course, he brings it up, especially after a few Kingsville beers.